What's up guys, and I'm back, and I just want to make it known that before we start, we're going to be talking about the Outback Bowl between Penn State and Arkansas that took place earlier today. But before I begin, I just want to say that the reasoning for my absence is I'm on break from school. I'm on my Christmas break. I go back on Monday. But the reasoning behind me not posting was that I have been very sick. I have, like it's It's been to the point where sometimes it hurts to talk. I've had coughing fits over and over again, and I don't have COVID, and I seem to be going towards the light at the end of the tunnel, so that's definitely a good thing. But I didn't want to give you guys content where basically I'm you know, choking like the Atlanta Falcons were in Super Bowl 51, if you know what I'm saying. So I, I just didn't, I wanted to wait and make sure that when I come back, I can give you guys the best content possible. But we're just going to get right into the content now. Penn State versus Arkansas in the Outback Bowl. Final score, Arkansas 24, Penn State Nittany Lions 10. The Arkansas Razorbacks, they're 9-4. Penn State is 7-6 after starting 5-0 and to end the 2021-2022 to season. And man, let me tell you, I'm not going to go as hard as I usually do in this just because, yes, I understand people were out, such as Jahan Dotson and Brisker for the defense there. I believe there were four defensive starters who were out, and I know Dotson was out on offense. They opted out so they could prepare for the draft, which I completely understand. They will be missed, and I wish them luck in the NFL. But what we need to remember is the fact that Penn State is in the Outback Bowl. We need to remember that, okay? And I understand you can do worse. I don't even think Penn State deserved to be there. Purdue had a great game in the Music City Bowl against Tennessee, but honestly, I think Purdue deserved to be there in the Outback Bowl over Penn State because they had the better season. They beat better teams than Penn State did. But anyways, Penn State, they should not have even been in this position. A 7-5 and five season up to this point is unacceptable. And don't get me wrong. I'm not expecting Penn State to sit here and have college football playoff season, national championship season, over and over again. No, I get it. You play Ohio State, Michigan, and Michigan State every single year. That doesn't include Wisconsin or Iowa and other teams you may play basically every single year, every other year. I understand. It's a tough task, and I don't expect us to be in the college football playoff every single year. I don't expect for us to be in a bowl like the Rose Bowl or the Cotton Bowl every single year, okay? Now, every now and then, 9-3, and 8-4, and four, I understand. But 7-5, and five, that is unacceptable, especially when you consider how they were 5-0. and oh. They won two out of their last eight games. Two, they beat Rutgers at home, and they beat Maryland on the road, and the only reason why they did is because they had Jahan Dotson. And don't get me wrong, I think you should utilize your talent and do what's working and that's what they did but let, let me but if Jahan Dotson did not exist they would have lost that game they would be six and six barely bowl eligible and let me tell you they would not be in the Outback Bowl they probably would have been in the Music City Bowl or some bowl like that and they would have had the privilege of losing to Tennessee or a team of that nature and we just need to understand okay I am not upset I mean I am upset that they lost but I'm not super upset I'm not going to go as hard as I usually do because I understand players were out there were players out for Arkansas too, but more players were out for Penn State. And that just proves to you that Penn State, in terms of talent, they're a top 15 team in this nation. And the fact that they're not even in the top 25 is embarrassing. And they don't deserve to be, but it's embarrassing. Their talent is so good, but they, they don't know how to use it. They just can't do it. Their offensive line, they have three to five star recruits all around that offensive line. And for whatever reason, especially the left and right tackle, I'm sorry. I'm not they could definitely do a better job than I can. Don't get me wrong. But they suck. They're not good, okay? It does not help Sean Clifford. But that's not just the only problem, okay? And I get Clifford wasn't getting much help from his offensive line. But Clifford forcing up passes. This is his fifth year. He's coming back for a sixth year. I can can guarantee you that he gets the job because Penn State feels entitled to give it to him. Why? Why is that the case? Sean Clifford, he's forcing up balls, forcing passes, doing stupid scrambles. Why are we running the ball so much with him? He's he's just a mediocre rushing quarterback. Why are we running the ball so much with him, James Franklin? I don't understand. Okay? And then the other thing, too, is Penn State. They're up 10-7 to 7 going to half. Okay? The only point scored on offense other than a field goal was a wide-open touchdown by Sean Clifford. And he missed another one earlier in this game. But... He threw it to a wide, 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 wide open receiver about 40 yards down the field in the end zone for a touchdown. It's not even like he ran a good route. Just nobody, no, there's no safety to cover him for whatever reason. So Penn State, they were like, they were given luck in this game and they still lost by two possessions. I mean, I'm not, I'm really not trying to be a negative fan, but please tell me. I, every single Penn State year aside from last year seems to go every, the same time, the same thing every year. They're ranked in the top 10. Sometimes they get as high as number four like they did this year. They play a big game. They barely lose. Then they look uninspired for weeks, even though their season's still on. Oh, okay, a one-loss team can still make the college football playoff. The only team, the, there was one undefeated 
um, FBS team. And that team was the Cincinnati Bearcats. And they made the college football playoff. And they were a group of five team. And like and they did lose to Alabama 27-6. to six. But you can make the college football playoff with one loss. You can go to a very good bowl game with one loss. That's something to build off of going into the years to come. Whenever we have these top five draft classes with Drew L.R. and Nicholas Singleton. Right? But that's not what happens. You see, Penn State, they just find ways to lose. I understand, right? I don't expect the person who's subbing in for for Brisker to do a better job than Brisker, okay? But let me tell you something. Some of these players have been on our bench as three-plus star recruits for the past year or maybe two years. Some of them even three. So when they step in, I don't expect them to do amazing, but I expect them to be serviceable to the team. And they were in the first half. The defense played amazing in the first half. Number 16 played a great game. But let me tell you something. Second half, K.J. Jefferson did the exact thing he did in the first half. And he got 100 yards rushing. I don't understand. Their game plan was to run the ball down our throats with Rocket and with KJ. And in the first half, that wasn't happening. We forced him to throw the ball. He made some mistakes. We pressured the quarterback. Then all of a sudden, Arkansas, it didn't even look like they changed a thing. They did the exact same thing. And all of a sudden, they're running all over us. Touchdown, touchdown, touchdown. They're throwing well. They're running well. And the reason why they're throwing well is because they have the run game opened up. So it opens up the pass game for play action. It opens up the pass game in general as well. So it really just makes you think, what the heck is Penn State doing in this locker room? Because they're do Arkansas is doing the exact same thing. Thing. You were gifted a touchdown. You were gifted another one, but of course Clifford missed the throw. And I understand you can't make them all, but I mean, come on. And all of a sudden you're you're losing. You don't score a single point after halftime. I don't understand. Clifford is throwing it in the double coverage. He's throwing it to where the receiver was instead of where the receiver's going. He's making bad decisions. You can argue that he's injured, but that's just a football IQ. That's just that's just your the mental state of your mind when it comes to playing the game of football. That has nothing to do with injury, okay? He is going to enter his sixth year, and he's making mistakes. He has digressed since his first year of the start of being a starter in 2019. That's what I want to get into as well. Arkansas is an SEC school. They play in a tougher conference. You could argue that Penn State might have the tougher schedule just because they're guaranteed to play Ohio State, Michigan, and Michigan State every single year. But the SEC is a tougher conference than the Big Ten. In my opinion, the Big Ten is the second toughest, SEC being the toughest. They are 9-4. Penn State is 7-6. Penn State has the better recruiting class. Let's go back two years, okay? You can say last year was a COVID year, okay? Penn State, 10-2 in 2019. Cotton Bowl Championship against, and a win against Memphis. But hold up. Now... In 2019, the Arkansas Razorbacks, and I get it, people were out. But the same team, you can't, you just can completely ignore the fact that people were out for Penn State. And just remember that Penn State is in the same bowl game as this team. And that's not to say Arkansas sucks, because they're not. They deserve to be in the top 25. They're a great football team, and I believe they're building something special. I believe they're on, they're trending in the right direction. But just the fact that Penn State, with better recruiting, with a better foundation, is in the same bowl with them, a team that went 2-10, and 10, in 2019, and had not won a game in the SEC for, I believe, 21 straight games or somewhere in the 20s. The only teams they could beat were teams like Portland and Colorado State. Their recruiting was much worse than Penn State's, but they made the same bowl as Penn State. They deserved to be there. In my opinion, Penn State didn't even deserve to be in the Outback Bowl. But you would think if Penn State had an underachieving year, they'd at least be able to win the freaking Outback Bowl. And they can't even do that. They were gifted points. They were gifted more points, but Sean Clifford decided not to care. Now, we have a quarterback coming back in his sixth year because he knows he has no NFL draft stock, especially after these past two years. And all we have to show for his term is a Cotton Bowl championship. I'm not complaining about that. That's a great year, okay? I wish we could have built off of that, but that is a great year. But we have to, we have just been on a decline. Meanwhile, teams that went 2-10 and 10 are beating us. I don't care who's playing. They should not be beating us. A team who was 2-10 and 10 two years ago should not be in the same realm as a team who won a Big Ten championship and, was, and their school was supposedly just turned around. Their direction of their team was turned completely 360 and in the right direction. And it was for a period of time. But then whenever all this NFL talent left, McSorley's gone. You have one good year. Then all of a sudden it relies a little bit more on James Franklin's coaching. And then you see it decline. 
Penn State over these past two college football seasons have a losing record. You can argue COVID year. They were seven, six this year. They were five and zero. I get it. Their second half of their schedule was tougher. They were five and zero. They won two out of their last eight. I don't care what team you are. I don't care what teams you're playing. That is absolutely pathetic. And the fact that Penn State was even in the same bowl as a team that went two and ten in 2019. And I'm not saying they're not good now. Don't get that in your brain. But that's absolutely embarrassing. And the fact that they can't even win. I don't care who's playing. Parker Washington had a great game. It should be next man up. I get it. People who are subbing in for players like Brisker aren't going to play as well. But you should at least be able to be serviceable. And in the second half on defense, you saw absolutely none of that. This defense is a good defense overall. But let me tell you something. Whenever we truly need this defense to step up and make a play, the only time I remember them doing it was against Wisconsin in week one against Graham Mertz on the road. Okay, it was an impressive win. But at the time, I mean, it's week one. You can't that can't be the only time this defense steps up when we need them the most, and that's what they did. And don't get me wrong, I understand the offense was never on the field in some of these games, so the defense was tired. But in a game like today, the offense was driving down the field. They just could not get it done. They could not score points. They well, As soon as they crossed the 50-yard line, they stalled. Sean Clifford making idiotic decisions. We can't run the ball. We had a decent day running the ball, but still not a 100-yard rusher this entire year. And we played 13 games. That's absolutely pathetic. I don't care about the offensive line situation. I don't care about who's a running back. We have three, four, five-star recruits everywhere we look, and we cannot get one 100-yard rusher for one game. Absolutely pathetic. Now, Penn State... I, 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 it's okay with me that they extended James Franklin, but the fact that they extended him for 10 years is showing me that they do not care at all. They think they can't do better. I understand. Maybe you get a worse coach and you sacrifice a year or two and you might lose some recruits, but eventually when you find that right coach, all those recruits are going to come back. Okay. I don't care about Sean Clifford's loyalty. I want to see the best quarterback starting. I want to see the best quarterback starting next year. And if they truly believe that's Clifford, okay, you can start him at the beginning. But I would probably disagree with that if that were to be the decision. But it will be the decision because they will feel entitled to start Sean Clifford. I just want to see the best quarterback start. I want to see a young quarterback like Drew Allard start. I want to see young people come in and rebuild this team. Because the only way we can win with James Franklin is if we have extremely high-end talent like we did in 2016 that carries us to victory. Because let me tell you something ladies and gentlemen James Franklin I don't think he's a terrible coach but he is nothing better than decent he is nowhere near Ryan Day Mel Tucker and heck I would even say Jim Harbaugh is better than him at this point Jim Harbaugh has a better record um, against James Franklin over his tenure and J and Jim Harbaugh finally got over the hump and that's something that we that we can't say Penn State has done really ever in this 21st century let alone the past five years. They did get over Ohio State, but at the end of the day, that those first two losses at the beginning of the season, one of them being to Pitt, killed them. If they would have won one of those games, they would have made the CFP and probably would have been ranked number four instead of Washington that year. But that's not what happened. But regardless, that's something that the program could have built off of, but we didn't do that. Instead, we, we, we were still really good, but we slowly started to decline, and then we started to just be decent, and now we're here. Okay, James Franklin for 10 years is not a good thing. I can understand extending him for one, two, three, maybe even four years, but 10, that shows me that A, this, this team does not care about their success, and B, that they truly must think that James Franklin is the man, and I personally just disagree with that. I understand he can't get on the field and play for these players. He's a great recruiter, but let me tell you something. He puts these people he recruits on the field, and he holds them back. He limits them because he's just a decent coach. He doesn't do anything to help them. He's there. He's a public figure. That's about it. You can say all you want in the press conferences, but I want to see it happen on the field every now and then, and it just does not happen. It doesn't happen. Penn State, they started 5-0, and and they're 7-6. and It's the same movie every single year, aside from last year. And even still, last year, they were 5-5. Five and five. But it's just the same movie every single year. I feel like I'm watching the same thing on repeat, and we're just going to keep getting this with James Franklin. We're going to keep getting this with Sean Clifford coming back next year, and my hopes will get up whenever they start off pretty good again next year, but let me tell you something. The, even though I want it, meet myself to be wrong, I know deep down in my heart of hearts as a honest fan of this team that the same exact thing is going to happen next year. Maybe, maybe they won't win. Maybe they'll win more than two 
out of their last eight games, but at the end of the day, they're still going to have that collapse, and we're just going to be see keep seeing, seeing the same thing over and over with James Franklin as his head coach for the next 10 years, unless if we get that recruiting class to come in, and they absolutely carry the man. I'm, I'm very excited to see where this program goes, but the fact that we are even in a bowl with Arkansas, they're a great team, don't get me wrong, they should be a great team, but we should be a better team. We should be in a better bowl. We should be in a premier New Year's Six Bowl, and not just the Outback Bowl, and let me tell you, the fact that we aren't, it's absolutely gut-wrenching gut-wrenching okay the fact that we lost is terrible but I, i'm not going to dwell on that too much considering the players that were out but you obviously i've said my opinion on that multiple times throughout this video but i would just like to say that the fact that we are even in the position that we were in is just absolutely terrible now penn state they we got to keep it going we got to keep it rolling going into the 2022 2023 um ncaa season for football you know we got to keep it going i have some hope but realistically, I envision next year being quite similar to this year. And I'm glad to be back. Um, I, The thing that I'm just going to say it, the NFL, they've been pretty mean to me. They've been copyright claiming my videos with Days of Our Steelers. Why? I have no idea. Because other people can create content like that and be just fine. Meanwhile, I do. And it's not just copyright striked. It's claimed. It's blocked. I have no idea why. Some of them are. Some of them aren't. And like I said, I have been sick. I feel like I'm seeing the light at the end of the tunnel now. That's why I haven't been uploading. It really breaks my heart because I've had a lot of spare time on my hands that I could have used to upload. But I hope you guys can understand that. And I'm glad to be back. And I hope you all have an amazing day. Happy New Year, everybody. And we are.